Good morning, All Souls community. Tommy Bello here, and it is Thursday, May 27th. I have the privilege this morning of bringing us a devotional, and we're going to go back to our passage that Pastor Will preached on just this past Sunday. And we're going to focus on the very last verse for today's reflection. That was 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. And it says this, By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So we see at the beginning of that verse that John ends up speaking to this idea of evidence. How do you know you're a child of God versus a child of the devil? And this idea of evidence is something that we in the West are obsessed with. I mean, we talk about it all the time, whether we realize it or not. We say things like, show me the money, or the proof is in the pudding. My generation loves to say, picks or didn't happen. But it, it, it shows our true colors in that sense. We are obsessed with evidence. We want a certainty that very often life is not willing to give us. But we see here that John does offer a certainty. Those who practice righteousness are the children of God, and those who do not are the children of the devil. Ironic about that is we balk against that, even though that is exactly giving us the certainty we are looking for. It is giving us the evidence. It is drawing, making something very black and white that when we apply it to ourselves, we tend to think of it in more gray terms, right? Uh, Pastor Will talked about this idea a bit on Sunday, but we find so often that when we are following Jesus, when our life is now found in him, we mess up, we sin, right? So is that what John has in mind here when he talks about this? Well, no, that sin is coming from a broken and fallen nature, but then what is John talking about here? Why mention this evidence? Well, it actually is in reference to just a verse before that, verse 9, where it talks about no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. And they don't do that because God's seed abides in them. So it's an interesting idea. God's seed abiding in them. We realize that when we, when we commit our lives to Jesus, when we declare him as Lord and Savior now, as the person who can save us from ourselves, life changes in a moment. And at the same time, it doesn't, at least from our perspective. But we find that the longer we walk with Jesus, the more our lives look like his as more of our lives are found in him. And what's funny is we know that to be true, given if you've had a long enough faith journey, but we don't apply that understanding to when it comes to evidence. I'll give you an example of that. The way we think of evidence, or the way we hope evidence looks like, uh, it kind of looks like one of those home garden things that someone can buy. My sister-in-law gave us one last year when we first moved here, and on the very box it says, the seeds will start to sprout in a week, you can start to harvest whatever you planted in three weeks, and you'll enjoy it for months after the fact. Talk about sure, deadline, black and white. You will know if this is working. The evidence will be obvious in one to three weeks. And we treat our faith like that. And we treat our world like that. And we treat other people like that. But very often it is very more nuanced, at least as far as how it shows up. Catch that distinction. It is more nuanced in how it shows up. We find very often that we want our faith and we want other people's faith to reap the harvest of that seed God has planted in them in one to three weeks, where most of us can attest to the fact that that is just not the case. The harvest of that seed and the blossoming of that seed in our lives that God planted is both instantaneous and slow. Theologians, theologians would call this idea sanctification, becoming more like Christ by the work of the Holy Spirit. When we have an understanding that that process can and will be slow, God has to clear out a lot of the junk to make room for that seed to grow, and he does, we find that we get not so caught up anymore in the evidence. We take it as it comes. We look for it in other people, but not as a litmus test, but as uh, a sign of God moving in their lives and working through them. It doesn't become the household garden that you can put in one of those like electronic plants pots like my sister-in-law bought us it becomes the tilling of a full garden a massive garden that takes time that takes care that takes effort and it takes something not found in ourselves 
What's really beautiful about this too is that we find that one of the most clear cut ways, because again, we, we like evidence, we like certainty most of the time. But we find that one of the most clear cut ways shows up the very end of verse 10, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So there it is. There is the litmus test if you want to think about that. We know you're a child of God practicing righteousness when you love your brother. Well, what does that mean? How does that look like? That's actually what we're going to preach about this coming Sunday because it flows out of the very next passage we'll find in verse John. So stay tuned and look forward to that. But for today, let's reflect on that. The evidence that sort of very often we so crave comes slow. It comes steady. And that is a good thing. Because any seed worth planting takes time to bloom and blossom. And how much more does that apply to the seed that God has that place it in us to change us from the inside out, to make us people who will stop sinning, come his return or the end of our mortal lives, as we practice righteousness and find that we have become children of God. What happened in a moment, but fleshed out over a lifetime. All right. Reflect on that today.